And welcome everyone to another Smart Money Circle update. I'm Adam Sarhan. With me today is Franz Santalimi, who's the CEO of Ladder Tech. Ticker symbol is LDTC. Franz, thank you so much for taking the time and welcome to the Smart Money Circle. Thank you, Adam. Thank you for having me. I'm quite delighted to be with you. So Franz, I always like to begin. Can you tell us a little about your background and how you got to where you are today, please? Well, uh, I'm an engineer by trade, as you might have guessed. Uh, so I began my, my career in the uh, uh, semiconductor industry. I was a chip designer for a company called Analog Devices mm -hmm. uh, just over 26 years ago. And, uh, you know, my, uh, you know, I kind of fell into automotive just by uh, accident because um, my company at that time, Analog Devices, we were looking at leveraging our core technologies into adjacent markets. And at that time, we were big in telecom and consumer space and automotive was a an adjacent market that we looked into. And so that's how I, I really started in the industry and then progressively evolved to a more leadership positions uh, at uh, Analog Devices. I was a general manager and then I moved on to uh, basically expand uh, my career to uh, working in Canada as well as in Europe and came back my last uh, company ZMD was acquired by Integrated Device Technology. Congratulations. Yeah, thank you. And uh, it, again, was a company developing uh, uh, automotive uh, sensing and software technologies. And, uh, and then I joined Lettertech in 2017, really with the promise of, uh, you know, creating an automotive success story. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, of course, it always takes longer than expected, but I'm glad that we're on this journey today where we have outstanding uh, core technologies that, that we believe can be a success. And so, you know, I joined uh, with the um, plan to succeed the former CEO, uh, Charles Boulanger, uh, as president of the company. And uh, once we became a public entity, this transition formally materialized. Nice. So let's talk about, by the way, great story. Let's talk about LetterTech. Can you tell us a little about the company, some of your competitive advantages and what you do? Yeah, indeed. So LetterTech, we are an automotive software company um, you know, that was founded in 2007. In fact, it was a research project from a, a very well-known uh, research institute in Quebec called the National Optics Institute. Nice. Um, and so the company... Uh, you know, really focuses on the automotive space, uh, developing what we call a, an AI-based fusion and perception software technology that's really targeting advanced driver assistance as well as eventually autonomous driving. But what we do is we make software that enables the vehicle to have a much better understanding of its environment, understanding the, the, the drivable lanes, understanding the obstacles that are within the lane, and to use AI to make intelligent scene understanding so that it can make best and safest driving decisions. The industry is shifting to a more software defined vehicle. So as regulations make safety mandatory and consumers are asking for more convenience features, uh, we believe that uh, the solution that we make, which is the first, the industry's first AI based fusion and perception technology will enable the market to uh, uh, to expand, but also to accelerate deployment of software-based features. Why this is important, Adam? There's, there's really good reasons for that. First thing is the moment that your vehicle gets out of a production lot, it's out of phase with state-of-the-art safety technology. Right. And so by having a software uh, based on AI and computer vision, machine learning, it allows the vehicle to actually learn as it drives. So the more miles it gets driven, the more intelligent, the more sophisticated the software becomes and the safer the vehicle. So you can imagine now you buy a car uh, this month and in September, the car is actually a better vehicle because right. our software improves as we collect more miles. I love that. And is that called, is that the fusion part of the conversation? AI Correct. fusion? Correct. So we fuse different... Um, uh, data from different sensors. So your car is equipped with uh, cameras, with yeah. radars, eventually with LIDARs and, and ultrasonic sensors. And so we take all the raw output out of each of these sensors 
we apply what we call machine learning on top of that and we fuse and then we interpret we use again ai to understand what's happening in that scene and this is quite important because you want the car to have a 360 degree peripheral view of the its environment and to be able to detect obstacles and and potential dangers uh you know 24 7 uh in any condition in any drivable area i love that let's talk about risk how do you handle risk and what are some mistakes you see people make front with respect to risk management well you know this is a very good question because there, there are many risks in the automotive industry as the car industry is shifting towards more electric vehicle um, towards more connectivity and then eventually more autonomous um, you have there's a tendency to uh, basically want to do everything in-house right um, that's a natural tendency of the, the car industry to have vertical integration, bring everything in-house. Um, unfortunately, no uh, car manufacturer can do everything on their own. You right. need partners. And software, uh, unlike Tesla, for example, where Tesla was the, uh, founded on the principle of software, was uh, born software ready. Mm -hmm. Most car manufacturers were not born software ready. Yeah. And so a lot of the OEMs and even their tier one suppliers have made a decision early on. They're going to build software in-house. They're going to build their EV batteries in-house. They're going to build everything in-house to realize that it's a gigantic effort. And you can see today from all the major OEMs who have invested billions of dollars in trying to build their own software stack, they've all had spectacular failures because it's not just putting more money at it. It's super yeah. complex. And so we think that collaboration is the proper way to, to go. Uh, you see, you've seen it in the telecom industry. You've seen it in the PC industry. And I think vehicles are starting to move to that uh, collaboration model. And that's the biggest risk because without collaboration, uh, er, you know, failures are just going to continue to pile up and billions of dollars are going to be lost. I love that. Spectacular failure. How to avoid spectacular failures might be the title of the episode today. So uh, let's talk about some timeless lessons you've learned, France, along the way that you'd like to share with the audience. You know, the, for, we talked about one is is collaboration. If, if you, in, in any industry where you have uh, high complexity, you know, TSMC and, um, you know, Taiwan Semiconductor makes the best process technology but for ai um, um, you know nvidia is known as having the best chip but yeah. nvidia doesn't make the best process technology they don't make process technology they collaborate with tsmc to develop the best chips so if you find the best uh, uh, um, uh, companies out there uh, collaboration uh, is the only efficient way of doing it uh, and then eventually it may make sense to insource it. But strategically speaking, um, you know, collaboration, finding the right partners that have the right vision, same uh, common vision with the end goal of delivering uh, customer success, that's the best way to, to, to succeed. Yeah, I love that. There's an old proverb says you want to go far, go alone. You want to go very far, go in a group or go with a team or collaborate. I might be paraphrasing there, but that's what comes to mind as you're speaking is build up. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So uh, let's talk about timeless mistakes. What are some timeless mistakes you've made or you've seen people make and how do you suggest we avoid them? You, you know, um, there's a saying, um, you know, it, when I was growing up, my mom used to always say that, um, you know, you you have to be able to uh, share success if you want to stay long term. And one of the mistakes that that I've seen um, the industry make is is the winner takes all mentality. Um, so in it, it comes from Silicon Valley. So you want to dominate the internet era. You you're the only big player, right? Yeah. Uh, sm cell phones. You want to dominate. You know, one or two players dominate. Uh, but deep tech doesn't operate that way. And I think the fact that is that you're going to see more fragmentation than you've ever seen because the problems are becoming more complex. So trying to go at, at it alone and also trying to um, be uh, the only winner 
uh, is, is, uh, is, is one mistake, is to figure out as an entrepreneur or as a CEO, what are you really good at? Mm -hmm. And then focus on that. And okay. so the trying to be the best at everything, uh, you're at, you become average at a lot of things. So Warren Buffett has a great line, which speaks to that point. It's know your circle of competence and then stay right. in that circle, whatever that is, and know what you right. don't know. Just, I'm, not, I'm not for me. All right, beautiful. Let's talk about leadership, Franz. What makes a great leader? Oh, I mean, there are so many um, types of great leadership. Um, for me personally, um, you know, I, my leadership style is about finding the best talent. Uh, you, know, you know, my job is, is really to figure out you know, where are we going and finding the best people um, to really be able to execute and deliver on that di uh, direction, on that vision. Mm -hmm. And so, but also, you know, it, it's, it's very humbling hiring uh, people that may be smarter than you and making space for them. Um, you know, it's, uh, it takes humility. And I think, you know, one of the best traits that, that I have, I'm a humble person and I'm not afraid to hire uh, uh, smarter people than I am. And, uh, and I think, you know, as, as a leader, if you surround yourself with enough quality people who buy into the, 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 the vision, um, it's hard to fail. I love that. So I'm very similar to you on the, the humility part of it. And I always joke around with people that I work with. I'm lucky if I can tie my shoes. <laughs> so <laughs> let alone figure out what you're working on. So by all means, empower them and all the more power to you. I, I love that. All right. Um, adversity. How do you handle adversity? What are some obstacles you've had to overcome throughout your journey? And what would you like to share? You know, adversity is part of, of my journey. Um, so, you know, the first thing is, you know, I uh, always stay focused on the things that I have the most control over. If I can control, you know, I worry about, about, you know, doing really well what I can do, what I know how to do and what I what I have under my control. If I can't control it, then I don't worry about it. Um, as long as I stay grounded to what I'm I have control over, I focus on that, then then I think everything's OK. So adversity to me is really navigating through moments of uncertainty. Um, so, for example, the automotive industry right now, there's there are moments of uncertainty. Uh, car manufacturers aren't making as much money as they used to. The tier ones are not making as much money. There's investments all over. There are delays because of the complexity. But the thing that we do at LetterTech is to deliver our software. We're delivering it on time over and over again. And that, to me, is is what I should worry about. What the market does, I can't control that. In the same boat. I love that. So let's talk about the best piece of advice you'd like to share with the audience or give your 30 year old self. Um, you know, intelligent risk taking. We're at this era where, you know, there's there's so much that's going on. Uh, there are so many uh, issues with geopolitical uh, challenges. Um, I think it's it's a great time to take risks. Um, and uh, there hasn't been any moment in my in my industry where there are so many opportunities. And I think, you know, uh, people that are smart enough to take the smart risk at the right time, who stay the course, uh, they have an opportunity to do something really, really amazing. And um, and I'm, I'm also quite fortunate to, to be between two generations where uh, at the same time, risk taking is also taking risk on the younger generation, making room for them because they are so creative in problem solving. Yeah. And if you can mesh the two, my generation and the younger generation, we do things that are absolutely out of this world. So intelligent risk taking, uh, it's also about taking risk on the next generation. Franz has been absolutely fantastic. Thank you so much. I absolutely love the intelligent risk taking, the spe how to avoid spectacular failures, the uh, co the team, co the collaboration aspect. You shared a lot of really, really great advice today. What is the best way for people to learn more about ladder tech? Well, you know, we are traded on the NASDAQ under ticker LBTC, so you can follow us there, but you also can follow us, uh, you know, on our website, lettertech.com. Uh, but we're always posting on, on LinkedIn, on, on the different social media platforms. 
We've got lots of content on our software. Uh, stay tuned for us. I love it. Well, thank you so much, Franz. Hopefully we'll have you on again soon. Thank you, Adam. It was great to be with you.